Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve Monday, Chief Forecaster with Rowan County Weather. And it's another edition of the Rowan County Weather Podcast. If you've watched these in the past, you've seen where we've talked with great folks, not only from around the county, but also around the state and the area. We've talked with NASCAR drivers. We've talked with uh, Charlotte FC coaches and players. We've also talked with some local talent as well. Uh, some of the local talent we've talked with, for example, if you watch back before Christmas and, and Thanksgiving, we spoke with Emma Clark, who plays for West Rowan High School, not only in softball, but she plays in basketball as well. I think even volleyball. Emma's one of those multi-sport athletes. And uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Coach Jimmy Green, who is the coach of West Rowan High School softball team. Coach Green, thank you for joining us today. Steve, uh, great to be here. I appreciate you allowing me to talk. And I I'm sorry that I'm not as famous as those other people. This is all you got. So. <laughs> I think I think it'll be just fine, though. So you certainly have a a storied uh, team, really, here in the, in the county. Uh, a lot of things have come out. The great things have come out about the West Rowan uh, softball team, really, over over the years. But especially over the last few years, you've put together a great program there. And I wanted to kind of give you a moment to really talk about how that program has developed from the time you came on board to where you are right now. Sure, I'd love to. Um, I was adding it up, talking to somebody believe this is my uh, 10th year, maybe 11th year coaching varsity. I started out as the JV coach at West and it has been, I actually started at the middle school before that. I put in a couple years before that. And so um, we've, I've been lucky. I mean, let's just, let's just call it what it is. Talent makes coaching look good. And I've had some amazing talent come through there. We, we were talking uh, a group. I've got a, one of my, Former players is a, an assistant at a Division One college. Uh, Hunter Gibbons, who's a coach at Carson, played for me, who, who set records at Western Carolina. Um, I've got a, a lot of people all throughout the county and throughout the state still playing softball and involved in it, so it's a lot of fun. We've um, It's funny, my daughters, um, who my oldest daughter was on my first team, she helps me coach, and my middle daughter, who's now helping at South Iredale, laughed that I'm not the same coach as I once was, especially all of her friends. It's uh, times have changed and I've evaluated um, how I've done some things. So sometimes I feel like I'm more guidance counselor than I am a coach. So we, we worked hard into uh, developing girls on and off the field. You know, we do a lot of things different. We've uh, we have the interview day where we learn how to conduct an interview in a job market they have to learn how to shake hands if you're ever out and about and you see one of my players you you we always say i'll say hey introduce yourself and they have to come up and they have to shake the hand look in the eye hey steve nice to meet you appreciate you being here we <laughs> we've had to work on a lot of other stuff now softball wise we've it's it's been a great let's just say situation for me i've had great help from my principals my athletic director they really back me on a lot of things um and, and my business on my in my insurance side I, I know a lot of people and we always laugh that I, I cash in favors I'm like a, 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 a the softball mafia I say hey man can I, have, can I ask a favor of you so we've had a lot of improvements to the field um I'm, I'm proud of that I'm proud of all the dads and everybody that we've had come help and work the field so We've also learned to try to make it a, a fun event. You know, we've added on theme nights. We've added on first pitches. We try to get the community involved as much as we can. We we take it as a highest compliment that I see other people doing it. You know, I, I've talked to some other coaches around, and they said, man, I like what you're doing. I'm going to do that. So I was like, yeah, come on, have, have, have at it. But it's it's really it's really been the girls. You know, it's really been the girls come along, working hard, Wanting to win and and being competitive, that's just a big, let's just say that's just a something big that you just don't see as much anymore. Girls that just truly want to win. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned how you kind of make it an event. You know, that's been one of the things that I've certainly enjoyed, not only with your program, but with, with programs over the last couple of years. I think as we've gone along, we've realized, you know, we've got to get some kind of hook to get people here. You've got, you know, because you don't get the luxury of having, you know, national TV or, or even, you know, ESPN or anything like that, like obviously college teams and, and pro teams and things like that would have. So you have to have something to 
lure someone other than the parents and the families of those players to the ball field or to the basketball court or whatever it may be. And uh, I've really enjoyed the theme nights, you know, like you, like you were speaking of, and it's kind of neat because there, in some aspects I've been at certain events, you know, that I've been able to cover doing this. And I feel like, man, I was at a party and all of a sudden a softball game broke out or a, ba a basketball, you know, and it makes it kind of cool. And so, you know, I've really thoroughly enjoyed that. And, and you, you can see that with also the student body, because now you don't have these kids who are going, I don't play softball or I don't play basketball. I don't want to go watch that. And now they want to come. And it's kind of a, you know, an event that takes place now. It, it is. And we've talked about that. And we've, we've talked about even with my girls, I, you know, we talk about giving back. When we have these words that are key words. And one of our words with WR Falcons, and the R is respect. We always talk about respecting ourselves, respect our opponent, respect the game. Um, but I tell them that they are looked at you know, in the community, it's, it's, um, when you, when you talk about the game, you talk about getting back, um, you have, you know, I, a lot of my girls, their goals are playing college. So you look at these college athletes and they're like, oh man, they're playing college softball with a dream. And I tell them, I said, you're looked at by the little leaguers, the middle schoolers, this high school team. It's, you are looked at as a, as a, as a little rock star, you know, and it's, um, uh, I still have a picture. It's it's pretty cool. I do. I actually do lessons with girls from all across the county. I, I represent. I got girls from three or four different schools in the county and outside the county. And I've got a picture of uh, there's a group of the East Rowan girls who are now going to be juniors. And they were at a West Rowan game watching us play when they were about eight years old or nine years old. So we we have a good time with their parents and and just uh, you know being on that journey, uh, enjoying the game. Um, I. I went to one of my first coaching clinics ever, and uh, Pat Murphy is the head coach at Alabama. He said, all right, guys, he says, if you coach girls, he said, write this down. He said, uh, girls have to feel good to win, and boys have to win to feel good. He said, there's a huge difference. And so we we kind of live by that. Absolutely. You know, one of the things, too, I've noticed over time really here in Rowan County is there's a great softball program in general countywide, uh, and that has – really helped girls softball in general just take off in the county over the last decade. Uh, and it's great to see because we've got some great players, not only at West Rowan, but, you know, South Rowan's got great players. East Rowan's got great players. Carson, North Rowan, all of them have great players. And at one time or another, all these girls have played together on the field, either on the same team or on opposing teams. And they've developed great relationships and respect uh, for each other and, you know, from a coaching perspective, you know, how, how do you view this? It's just, it's a proud moment. Uh, you know, I love I, where my office is. I can walk to Catawba College and um, I can walk over there and I'll watch and sneak games during the week. And, you know, I, I, I can see girls that are playing at Catawba from Rowan County that uh, I know Carson. I mean, uh, Lana played, uh, Lise McCray this weekend over there. So I was, when I, again, when we were kind of having a reflecting softball moment, I've got, I think I've got five girls for me right now that are in college playing a sport. And a lot of them, four of them are at division one and doing well. And then, you know, you look at where else in the County, who all has played. I mean, we, uh, people were talking about, uh, you know, Hey, what's the season look like coming up? And I'm like, man, you know, we got a talented conference. East Rowan has got from head to toe. Uh, South Rowan is, is really good. I think South Scott, what maybe three or four girls going signed already to play in college. So it's a reflection of our county. I mean, we, we they girls put in time. Girls and parents know what it what it takes. It used to be one or two skilled players. Give me a few athletes, and I can field a team. And uh, it, it's sports are becoming a twelve month commitment now. So you know you have to really compliment the girls being able to put forth that time and effort, and and they're working hard at it and. It's, I'm going to tell you, it's a cool feeling going to, uh, we usually take a trip every year to go watch one of our girls, whoever's playing in college. And we've been to UNCC and, and watched him ever. And, um, the, you know, it, it's one of my girls was talking about, it's just fun to travel. Like I get to, you know, I get to see the world. I'm, I'm you know, traveling down to wherever in Alabama and all over the South and even the country. Um, it, it's just a, really cool event one of the things we thought about my, my daughter and I a couple of years ago 
my middle daughter, we laughed. She was supposed to go play at UNC Wilmington. And she broke dad's heart and went to NC State and, and became an ag student, which worked out perfect for her. But she got to be friends with the Wilmington group. And then my player, Mary Sabotica, transferred to Wilmington. I knew the coach as well, and we, I, I helped her out there. And they made it to the College World Series. And we, we were trying to think. We think Mary's the first person from West Rowan to play in the College World Series. And we're trying to think if anybody from Rowan County had made it. I, I think I, I just we were going to look at. It. That was just a cool, cool, uh, cool stat to think of. So, but anyway, it's it's just really neat to love. I love the game. I love getting to know coaches. Um, part of my part of what I like to do is I'm not afraid to send emails and I'm not afraid to talk to coaches. And that's this that salesman in me. You know, I'm it's just it doesn't bother me. I can I, I've been told no many a time, so it doesn't doesn't hurt me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that feeling, you know, because I'm I'm not afraid myself to to reach out. And the worst thing somebody can tell you is no. And if yeah. they do, you just move on to the next one. Right. I That's mean, right. <laughs> and, and I and you probably learned as well as I have over time. Some of the folks that have told you no before will say yes somewhere down oh, the road. <laughs> I, I told rule the rule of business is uh, rule yeah. business is seven contacts. I'm supposed yeah. to make contact with somebody seven times and they're finally going to mention, oh, well, yeah, we'll talk about that. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. I do the same thing with coaches. You know, I'm just not afraid anybody in the county. Uh, we, we, one of my good friends is Bradley Bloom. His daughter uh, played at Le, uh, Lenore Ryan. And, mm -hmm. Oh, it was, she was in high school and he used to talk to me all about it. He's like, man, he's like, uh, uh, are you at a coaching clinic? Go talk to that coach for me. Go talk to this coach for me. I was like, yeah, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. So we we, we just have a good time with that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coach, so you've told us about a little bit about your program. We'll talk more about the program, especially you've got a big season of him coming up. It's uh, certainly going to be an emotional season, I, I would imagine, with some of the talent you've got that's getting ready to head off to college. And we'll talk more about them in just a moment. But let's take a moment for you to tell – everyone that's watching about the man jimmy green himself so i know you i know you do insurance talk to us about that but also about what you you know what do you do when you're away from the softball field and you're just able to just be jimmy green well uh, <laughs> for what however it's funny how rumors start and somebody says aren't you going to stop coaching after uh emma when emma leaves and and uh, my wife steps in and she says no he is not going to stop coaching he, he 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 stays busy this feeds my competitive side um we, you know, when I started, my parents divorced, graduated from Davie County High School, and then I'm, I came back after after school and got into business with dad. And, you know, my dad taught me at an early age about, uh, he said, it's okay to be competitive, son, and have a good time uh, playing sports, he said. But, you know, you look at the bigger picture, and he says, we make a living off the people of Rowan County. And my dad's always had a, a great affinity for everybody. Um, you know, and he just says, we, we've we done well here, and, and we have, and I've done well, and it's, that's the way I look at it. We talk about everybody. We, we kid and say, hey, it's okay to have rivals, but you still love the person, and um, th this county's been very, very good to me, and I and I love Rowan County. I am, um, I, I've had a a good run, and it's all because, I mean, I, it starts with my family. My wife is so supportive of me and allows me to do whatever. She's, she's, she's been awesome, and I've, I've, um, Stayed busy doing a little bit of everything. You know, I've actually um, uh, served on quite a few nonprofit boards. Uh, um, I'm actually on, you know, the school board now. I got elected uh, a couple years ago. So so technically, I am the volunteer coach at West Rowan. I cannot be paid. So let's make sure everybody knows that. I do not right. draw a salary. Right. Um, we, you know, it it was really cool. I had a, a student from Carson. So the school system has a um job shadow day and it was february the first and it was a young young guy um from carson and he signed up to talk about insurance and he came up to me and uh, he was here and he had a great personality and he had a good time and so i was like all right so we we, we spent an hour or two talking about insurance and i said all right well come on we're going you're going to job shadow me i'm going to we're going to go to the school system. Let's go to the central office and meet everybody there. Then I, I'm also right now, I'm president of Civitan, which is a local civic organization. And we went to a Civitan meeting. And then I took him to one of my businesses that I have insured. And we did kind of a a fake inspection and let him feel about insurance. And then uh, my good friend is uh, 
because at Chick-fil-A, so the running joke is anytime you know Jimmy Green, usually free Chick-fil-A follows. So uh, <laughs> my my good buddy Bo always hooks us up. And so we stopped by there and got some free food. And as we were coming back to, to my office, he looked at me and he said, Mr. Green, I'm not sure what I expected for today, but this wasn't it. <laughs> he said, I said, I feel like I've been all over the world. I said, yeah, I, I usually stay busy and, and, and do a lot. I mean, I, I, I usually... Um, I do a lot, just like what my dad said, to give back. We we try to, the, the, the people have been good to us, so what can we do for the people? Um, so, you know, we've I'm involved in United Way. I've been involved in our church. I've been involved, um, obviously, with the schools. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of my draw right now is, the, uh, is being involved with, uh, I love our schools. Yeah. Um, I love our students. I want to make us the best we can. We, we have, and this is one of the things I told everybody, even when I was campaigning, it's amazing the athletic success that we've had here in Rowan County. You know, Javon Hardwick just playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, just, and we always say it seems like it's despite facilities. We have just 60 year old schools. And, you know, we, my favorite joke is when we were, I was working a concession stand and Hickory Ridge came into our conference and uh, I heard the parents say, Man, they got toilet paper chained in the bathroom. <laughs> I said, well, well, welcome to the farm. You know, this is, this is just how we are. But we, we've we've just got so many student athletes to be proud of you know so that's that's kind of what i do but it's it's just you know I, i'm just blessed i'm lucky i don't do anything special i just try to i just thank the lord and and, and just see what i can do moving on next yeah absolutely and, and you know i love that attitude about you too you know you, uh, the school system certainly is uh i i'm honored to to have the school system we have here uh especially looking at all the things, not only student athletes, but the students get to do. You mentioned uh, Hargrave, you know, not only did he play in this year's Super Bowl, he played in last year's Super Bowl as well, which yeah. may be a first on two levels. I, you know, we'd have to go back and look and see if any Rowan County athlete has ever played in the Super Bowl, but much less playing back to back Super Bowls. <laughs> I know. I know. I, and, and even though uh, I, I was, I was kidding with them, they, the, the, um, the Seeger boys live in Rowan County now. Yeah. And, you know, they, we, we'll say, hey, you may have graduated from Northwest Cabarrus, but you're Rowan County now. You, That's you, right. you pay taxes in this county, so you're you're here. So we got to we'll, – we'll claim a World Series MVP. But, uh, yeah, it's – my son, you know, as you as you been involved in the sports world, we used to – I used to play pickup basketball and slow pitch softball and stuff. And, you know, I was telling him about Bobby Jackson. You know, an 18-year-old yeah. kid didn't realize that the NBA sixth man of the year – Played over here at Salisbury High School, you know he, what? He said, "Who?" And it's so uh, it's it's. Uh, I said, "Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. It's uh, we've got a good history." Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, students in general, my so I saw you uh, a few weeks ago, and you probably had no clue I was even there. But I, I was at a school board meeting and saw you. My daughter was part of the Carson Chorus, and they had just come back from going to Hawaii and singing at Pearl Harbor. And you guys had them up there to kind of honor them and. Uh, it was a it was a neat deal, and I kind of cracked up laughing at you because you said, "All right, now sing us a song," and all I'm gave you the deer in the headlights look of like, "Wait a minute, we're supposed to perform here today too." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try to I try to lighten those things up. Sometimes you know, it, it they don't kids don't know what's going on when you're just being paraded up here to shake yep. hands. And I try to tell them, I was like, "I want to hear it." And then I, as they came through, I was like, "All right, what are you singing?" He's like, "You know," they're like, "What?" I said, "What do you sing? Tenor." I said, okay, good. I, you know, I, I want to hear what you're saying. And the baritones and the basses came through. I said, that's that's uh, that's that's the best that I can do. I, I I remember singing in our church choir for our cantata one time, and this little old lady looked at me and she said, Jimmy, loud is not a key, so <laughs> keep it down. So I appreciate people can sing because I cannot sing. Yeah, and I I don't know where my daughter got that talent from because I can tell you it's certainly not me. If uh if I start singing, I'm pretty much told right away to just uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what that's what my car radio is for. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's where my concert, the car and the shower. That's my concert. Absolutely. We're gonna talk more about your team in just one moment, but you know, from being a businessman yourself, I've got to pay a quick bill. I got to thank the sponsor of our podcast here, William Ryan Enterprises. And for those of you that have been watching, especially over the last month or so, you may have heard some noise in the background. You may be hearing noise in the background today. We've been doing a master bathroom remodel in our home, and they've been doing a fantastic job of it. Uh, but William Ryan Enterprises is located at 1600 North Main Street in China Grove. They're in the old Grove Supply Building. Not only are they William Ryan Enterprises, they're also William Ryan Flooring and Supplies. 
So uh, if you've been planning on doing a master, well, any kind of remodel, or maybe you're looking to build a custom home, stop by and check them out. And they can certainly help you out with that. And uh, maybe even Jimmy can help you get some insurance on it after it's all said and done. I'd be glad to. <laughs> there you hey, go. and Steve, Steve, let me jump in here too and sure. say, I, I just want to appreciate you, people like you and Mike London, who keep this local, oh, thank you. Um, let's just say information slash sports yeah. slash just keeping things in the county. I, I don't know where we'd be without you guys. I'm I'm worried about when Mike finally decides to retire. I'm going to have to lean on you. You may have to step up and get in the sports world even more than what you are now. So, yeah. Yeah, well, and you know, and I've been trying to do that. We've certainly, it's, you know, behind me, it says Rowan County weather, and we just celebrated 10 years of that. But obviously, and you know, from yourself being in business, you you have to adapt as you go along. Yeah. And I was glad that I was able to get the weather piece started here. Um, and, you know, everybody knows the story behind why I started that. But uh, over time, I've been able to be, you know, blessed myself to get involved. I've had some sports teams reach out to me, you know, to start out kind of doing a few things here and there for high school. And then uh, the Charlotte FC reached out to me, and I've been blessed to be with them going on three seasons now. I'll be with them starting again Saturday night. This is getting to the time of the year where my wife is like, okay, I guess I'll see you around Christmas. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and then coming up this year, you know, I'm also doing some stuff. I don't know how much you, you, you get involved in racing or anything like that, Jimmy, but uh, we've got some great drag racers here that live in the Kannapolis area, right on the on the Rowan County side of Kannapolis. Uh, uh, Tony Wilson, his sister Tisha Wilson, they're going to be running a fantastic season of drag racing this year we're going to follow them along with that and then of course uh nascar doing some big things there i just found out this morning i'm going to be at bristol on march 17th covering the food city 500 That's so awesome. and and, uh, and along with that it gives me the ability to, to certainly be able to cover these young young men and women here and uh yeah you know mike is going to be a hard role to fill but certainly if uh you know, if that void needs to be filled, I'm ready to step up and take it because we certainly want to continue to celebrate what we have here with, you know, not only our young student athletes, but the county in general. Well, you, you, you your name will get dropped because we, we've actually, I've actually talked to Dr. Withers about that, our superintendent, and yeah. uh, especially, you know, uh, David Wisnett has done such a great job representing yeah. Rowan County, and, you know, he's officially retired now too, and right. I've told, uh uh, I know uh, Chandler, the new. Um, oh yeah, Callsbury Post. Yeah, Chan Chandler yeah. does a good job. And, yeah, but you know he's talked about you know what their business model is moving forward, and you know Mike's just irreplaceable, and we we right. we got to figure something out for the county. I just I, sure. I you know uh, Mike's our Mike's our Twitter king here in Rowan County, and everybody in the sports loves to find out what's going on. You know, yes. and it's the the. Uh, local sports is is a bigger component. I, I remember somebody telling me years ago, I can pick up my phone and look at the what the NBA box scores are or the college world right. series, but I don't know how South Rowan did against East Rowan. Yep. You know, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's been one of the things I noticed when I started trying to cover some of the local, especially the soccer and stuff here. I've been yeah. trying to cover a lot of the sports that kind of get left behind. I love football. Don't get me wrong. And football and baseball, probably our biggest draws in the County softball is getting up there. Uh, and then, you know, everything else is kind of in, in line behind it. So, uh, but Mike, you know, as you mentioned, he does a fantastic job of it. David has, has done a fantastic job certainly over the years, but uh, certainly absolutely. I'm with you. And, you know, and I appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, singing not only my praises, but their praises as well. Uh, but back to your team. So big season coming up. You've got a lot of, you know, a lot of great talent still to go. I know a lot of the focus is, uh, you know, from outside in is going to be on Emma, obviously, but uh, going to the University of Tennessee and certainly had a great conversation with her on the podcast here and very, you know, just a very nice young lady. Uh, but you've got some other players as well. So let's talk about your your other players and then we'll work our way to Emma. Yeah, yeah, I've um, we we this is going to be a different year for me. I lost four starters last year, four senior right. starters. Uh, two of them are playing college softball. The other two could have played, but you know, just chose to go uh, down a path. Just want to go to college and be a student. Completely understand that, and they they have been just uh, rocks in my program. So we have some spots to fill. But I've got again, I'm, I've got great talent. Um, we we know. Um, I've got my main pitcher back, Arabelle Schulenberger, who I'm expecting another good year from her. She's been very solid, and she she's a hard worker. And Arabelle will play in college. She's just searching to find her right home. Um, I'll probably have EA Nance, you know, catching. And EA is another one that's going to play in college. She's a junior, and she's she's just she's 
she's been all county, all conference, and all region. So that girl can hit. Um, I've got um, in my infield. I've got some girls. Uh, Taylor Keller has been a uh, starter for me in right field for two years, and she's going to step up and move to the infield because it's what's needed. She's just been a great team player. Um, you know, we, we Riley Hagis has he's been playing second base for me. She's signed to the University of Tampa, so she's going to play college softball. Um, I've got uh, a, a brand new outfield. I'm I'm working for. I've got another senior, Maggie Lightman. I've got some sophomores, Lucy Mack Shelton. Now with Dobie as a junior, um, who you know we, we're we're going to re work and revolve. And my my, we talked about it that my starting lineup may not be at the beginning of the season the same as it is at the end of the right. season. So we'll we'll work through it. But we we've, we've got you know I'm only think I'm disappointed as my first year ever I don't have a JV team and I, I hate it. I don't I don't have the numbers like I like I have, but I'm going to have 15, 16 girls on roster for varsity, and they're all, they'll probably all get a chance to chip in. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple of good freshmen that, you know, I think will step up. Um, there's a Reese Poole who played for me at the middle school who who uh, has a, a desire to play at college, and she she can do it. She's a tough nugget. She's she is uh, she's solid. And uh, Kayla Burns, whose sister mm -hmm. played – she plays at Catawba, and Kayla – played at Carson. So, uh, I, I mean, uh, excuse me, Lord, Allie, her sister played at Carson. <laughs> Kayla plays right. for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I've got a, a, I've got a couple other girls. I've just got, you know, I can say them all, Lacey, all of the, all the girls that are there that are going to be a part of the team. We, we, we really have tried to try to focus on being a team, no matter what, win or lose. We're all in this together. What can we do for each other? Um, we do a, like I said earlier, we do a lot of other stuff, um, yeah. a lot of team bonding. And that helps us, and we know that this is one of the years the conference is going to be again just solid. Um, I, I know for a fact, being around, um, you know, I've seen girls come and go, and some girls that are coming in, the younger talents coming up. You know, we, um, I said earlier, South Rand is going to be very good. East Rand is going to be very good. Um, Carson is has got uh, uh, some pitching to replace Lana. They you know they've been just really solid. Um, Central Cabarrus, my friend Charlie's coming back to coach there, and unfortunately Charlie is an excellent coach. So I know that Central Cabarrus is going to be uh, back in the mix. He's got um, I work with one of their pitchers there, and you know Concord, who's historically not been very good. They've got some girls that come in that play tournament ball now. So you know it's it's a it's a it's it's a tough conference. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the things you mentioned earlier, you talked about how you you, you have your players like if they see somebody out, you have them walk up, say hello, shake their hand, all that. Um, you also, I think, if I remember correctly, you kind of mentioned like interview tactics and things like that that you all do. And I know that's going to work out well. So with some of your players that have gone on to play for college, have they ever responded back to you and say, man, if we didn't do that right there, I probably wouldn't be able to do this here. Well, it's, it's great. I, I, when, when um, people from the paper used to come out, Mike doesn't come out as much as he used mm -hmm. to, but when they would come out, I'd, I'd grab him the arm. I'd say, okay, all right, Marty Hendricks wants to talk to you. Now, when he does be boring and be polite and be respectful. And I said, that's what you need to remember in an interview. <laughs> she said, really? I said, yes. And so I said, a guy told me one time, he said, Jimmy, he said, you're too young to be entertaining, be boring in the paper and on the interviews. He says, you can be funny with your friends. So I've, I've tried to do that. And and we've talked about that. You know, I, I'm, I'm even sitting here thinking as you're talking to me going, oh gosh, how many times have I said, um, because we, that's our word. You know, you're supposed to go silent before you say, um, um, so we, you know, and that's another thing we've worked on. So we, it, I do love seeing them being quoted in the paper and I hope they, they stick to some of that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, that was one of the things I, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I did interview Emma, uh, you know, back right, right around Thanksgiving and she did such a fantastic interview. And I don't know if that's all you, or I know she's probably had some, some excellent uh, folks along the way. I know her dad's really involved with her Ken, you know, and also her, her mother as well. Uh, so I'm sure they've molded some things into her, but, you know, she did such a great interview and, and I would ask her questions and, and, you know, kind of like I've been doing with you that are just coming out on the fly as we talk. And she, you know, was able to just bang out the answer without thinking about it. I don't even remember her saying, um, not once in that interview, just to be <laughs> honest with you. So. 
<laughs> yeah, she 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 does a great job. Listen, it's the the first sign of leadership. You know what you do? You accept and take all the praise, and then you mm -hmm. deflect all the negativity. Anything that's wrong, you yeah. defer that to somebody else. So everything good that Emma does that comes from Uncle Jimmy. Everything <laughs> uh, she does wrong that comes from my little sister. So <laughs> there you go. We we, right, so, you know, we we we've laughed about it, jumping in talking about Emma, and I I said it at her signing. Um, and I will take this moment to brag on her about this. Yes, sure. Emma is what you would just call a freak of an athlete. That's just a phenomenal athlete that has come along once in a lifetime. You know, we watch her play basketball and volleyball. And Jan Dowling, her volleyball coach, used to shake her head and said, man, I can make her a major division one volleyball player. And, uh, you know, same thing with basketball. She's six foot. She's fast. But she just she just loves to be in the dirt. You know, she wants to hit the ball. And. Emma's probably the one of the best teammates that I've ever coached. Um, I'll just, I have to give her that praise. She is a cheerleader for her team. It is easy for girls to develop jealousy. It is easy for girls in this time where uh, it's a lot about me, you know, and Emma is not, and especially with what Emma gets. Uh, Emma gets a lot of praise, gets a lot of attention, but it's deserved and she handles it well. Um, I give her credit for, we talk about, um, you know, Emma's getting into a world, SEC softball is just, it's like SEC football. You just That's don't beast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we went out and watched a game one weekend, and this is after Emma had committed. And Emma, we were waiting to go in and go talk to coaches and go in and talk to Karen Weekly and them. And she said, uh, she was uh, standing there, and there's little girls, there's probably 30 girls standing there. And they're like, do you play for Tennessee? She says, no, I, I, I've committed to play. And then what's your name? Emma Clark. Oh, this is Emma Clark. Next thing you know, she's signing autographs, you know, all these little <laughs> kids. And, and uh, so she, she did a great job, but we, I was, when we went on her recruit visit, it, I tell you, it was pretty cool. I got to be friends with the uh, Florida state head coach, Lonnie Alameda. And I got to talk to Karen weekly a good bit. And, um, you know, one of my, friend we we met Lonnie at a coaching clinic in so Charlotte and I do Stuart Perkins is a friend of mine his daughter Cam pitches for East and we were there and he won a he was he, we got a dinner there so we got to hang out with her and we were standing there and she kind of we we talked for hours and she said well is anybody good enough to play at Florida State and I didn't say anything Stuart jumped in he said his niece Emma Clark <laughs> sure enough six months later Lonnie gets in touch and she said I've been following Emma. You're right. She she's she's good. Why didn't you why did you downplay that? I said, well, it's just you know how they talk about dad talk. I said, I didn't want to be that uncle talk. You know, I let uh, I I tell my college, here's what I tell a lot of the college co uh, coaches, and I, I say it for a lot of these girls. I said, I'm gonna tell you, this girl has the work ethic to play for you. This girl has the attitude to be the teammate that you need. This girl has let's just say a lot of the other extras it's up for you to decide if she has the talent level for you but right. i'm going to speak to all the other pieces and a lot of the coaches are receptive to that and like that and 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 so it's it's a little piece of honesty but going back to him and talking to karen weekly when we were there karen and i spent some time together and she said uh, they called me uncle jimmy she said well, uncle jimmy <laughs> she says you know what do you see me doing with them i said well I said, you're going to let Emma hit, and you'll find a place for her in the defense wherever you're lacking. Um, but I said, I said she'll she'll be fine. She's going to she's going to blend in on your team. And she said, you know, you know the difference when we went from Emma because when Emma was getting recruited, it's Emma's been the closest thing to. Here's what drives me crazy, Steve. I hate to get on a side tangent about softball. No, you're fine. Softball girls work their tails off to get recruited. They do. It, they have to contact and email and it's on mm -hmm. them. And I, and I, yeah. I feel their plight because, you know, my daughters did it. it. We've been through it. Emma's been the one person who's been, had her door knocked down. You know, she's been that, that football recruit or basketball right. recruit where everybody right. comes after. And uh, so it's, you know, I just told Emma to take advantage of it. I said, do yeah. this for all the girls out there who are working their tail off just to get somebody to email them back. You take yeah. advantage of it. But um, but Karen said that, that what made her go on their board to the number one, she said, we were at a tournament. And she said it was a pretty big game, and Emma struck out. And she mm -hmm. said she struck out at a big moment. She kind of dropped her head when she went into the dugout. 
And then 10 seconds later, Emma was out on the field going to the shortstop, high-fiving her teammates, yeah. laughing, just lifting everybody up. And she said that's when we knew she had – up here yes. what it takes to play for us that's right there, there, there are the a lot of girls play. out there that can hit and, and, and run as fast right you know it's 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 out there yeah absolutely it's that on to the next play mentality i'm not going to sit here and dwell the rest of my game on what just happened there i'm moving on to the next thing baseball and softball are a game of mistakes yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if they weren't there, we wouldn't be tracking errors on them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, what is it? Uh, I think it was Babe Ruth or somebody said whoever it said that you know you can go to at bat ten times and strike out seven times and you're an all star. Yeah, <laughs> Get three hits out of ten. Yeah, so that's right. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, tell us. So let's talk about. Uh, I always like to ask a few questions of of my guests as I get ready to wrap up. Um, and one of the questions I want to ask of you is: so I always ask folks to talk about their most proud moment in their careers and their most adverse moment in their careers. So let's start with your most proud moment, and then we'll hit your adverse. You know, that's hard to say. Um, yeah. We, my wife and I, talk about this that every year, two things happen. One thing makes me wish I could quit coaching right now and never do it again. And then number two, something happens that makes me glad I'm coaching. Yep. And it it really happens every year. I'll have it, an issue with, uh, unfortunately, it's been that way every year. Something crazy happens. It just drives me insane. And I'm shaking my head. So can you believe this? And I'm at home at night staying up. And she's like, you know, you're worried about this. You've got to let it go. And then – you know, something happens and I'll see a girl out and they'll say, you know, man, I, I had a, one of my best times was sitting the bench playing for you. I never got to play, but I love being on that team or, you know, it's, I think for it's, it's such a bunch of highs and lows for me. I've learned to just appreciate the journey and know that the good and the bad are coming. Um, I have to look at the bigger picture. Good. I, I love staying in touch with my, my girls that have played for me. Um, one of my girls, Madeline Klutz, who's just awesome. She graduated a couple years ago. She didn't play a lot for me, but she's my little ad queen. And she always brings me corn. She always brings me food. She'll stop. She'll text me every now and then. I get that happy birthday text from her. So it's, uh, it's, it's little stuff like that, 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 um, uh, makes it good. Now I'll tell you on April the 6th, it should be pretty entertaining. We've laughed. My middle daughter is assistant coach at South Iredale. My oldest daughter helps me coach, and my sister, Elizabeth, is Emma's aunt. I mean, Emma's mom is my uh, assistant coach. Emma plays for us, and Parker coaches at South Iredale. So we we play South Iredale, and uh, so it's going to be a big uh, – it's going to be a big event. We are laughing about that. And that's, that's also a proud moment for me, but, um, you know, once you coach another school, you're dead to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> April 6th, you said, well, you're going to have to send me that. I might have to make a trip over to check that one out and yeah, maybe cover it. We'll, yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun to watch it, watch it unfold there, I think. So, absolutely. Um, so, you got the new season coming up. Uh, what are you looking for? I know you've got some tough opponents. I'm sure you just talked about South Iredale, April 6th coming up. But, uh, what are, you know, I know you don't overlook any games, but what what game are you looking at as, as the big one for you this season? Well, I <laughs> – I don't know. It's going to be yeah. another journey this year. I'll tell you this. Um, one thing that's factored in is we are, uh, my conference has been very helpful that the state moved back the state championship for right. basketball. We want our girls to win it all. But the way it was set up, Emma was going to miss nine games, five of them conference, which uh, is just really not fair. You know, it's not fair to anybody. Right. So the, uh, our conferences work to move most of our conference games um, so she won't miss them. So we're going to play our non-conference games. So I would probably say, you know, what we need to do is we're going to figure out who we are for a couple games without Emma. See, we, we've got, you know, I've got four new starters minimum. Uh, find their place, find, get used to it. Don't, it, I will, you, you, you said earlier when you talked about uh, fans, um, we've had a good fan showing. We have a lot of people to come to our games. Um, right. And so, you know, you, it's different. I tell these guys, I don't care the hypest tournament game you've ever been in. You can go to Colorado 
-hmm. and you're playing in front of your mom and dad and maybe a grandparent there. I, but the coolest thing that I hear in my dugout is my girls are in the they're in the dugout talking to each other. Look, Coach Curley's here. Oh, look, Miss Erdman's here. You know, when the teachers <laughs> and the staff show up, and yes. you got to play in front of your school, it's a big yep. difference. But we got to get them used to that, used to some school ball. And I think the first game we get Emma back, you know, I'll tell you this, I'm curious to see how they pitch to Emma. Uh, my friend Charlie at Central Cabarrus, I think he'll just tell you, I'm not going to go to her. They're going to walk her intentionally. She's going to she's gonna get the Barry Bonds treatment a lot this year. Yeah. And so I think uh, for us, we always work towards the postseason. We, we break it down to non-conference games or non-conference games. I, I hate to lose, but it is what it is. Right. Conference is where we focus. Let's work on conference, build up to that, and then work to the postseason. And it's just two seasons. We call it the conference, uh, you know, conference regular season and the postseason. So I don't, I don't have any, but it's going to be tough. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to be tough. I'd, I'd say we've got, to, we've got to put the bat on the ball. That's, that's going to be our biggest thing is, is, is manufacturing runs. Arabelle is a solid pitcher. Uh, Reese can back her up, and I got Lacey who can pitch as well. So I probably got a little bit more pitching than I've had in a long time. I've had to ride one stud every year um, for probably six, seven years. So that ought to be a, a, a good luxury for me to have. Yeah, absolutely. It's always nice to have a few extra arms there, you know, because you really don't want to burn your 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 starting pitcher out. But at the same time, if you don't have the arms back there behind them, what do you do? You know, so I, I, we 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 point to last year's Davy County game, which was like yeah. the worst game of the year for us. It went 15 innings and, yeah. you know, uh, wore out. Arabelle just wore and it was early on. Weather right. was a little bit cool. So, yeah, it, I, you can't get too focused on that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coach, it's been great having you with us. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, seeing not only this season, but all your seasons coming up unfold. And and uh, thank you for everything you do around the county, not only, you know, as you said, with the Civitans, with the school board. You know, it's it's always great to see folks that give back. Uh, you know, I'm of the mentality, and I think you are too, without even really, you know, knowing you beyond the conversations we've had on Twitter or X or whatever it is now and then. Mm -hmm you know, here on the podcast, but, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I want to leave the world a better place than it was when I got here and you seem to be the same way. So I certainly appreciate that about you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We always, my, I, I love when uh, my coaching fraternity, we always butt heads on the field, but I used yeah. to tell my umpires all the time, when we walk off that field, I promise you, we'll go get something to eat and hang out together. Yeah. I may, I may act like a jerk on the field because I'm too freaking competitive, but when it comes to when that game's over, we all live a life and we all got a world to be in and we all got a chip in. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, that's Coach Jimmy Green at West Rowan High School softball joining us today. We certainly appreciate his time and uh, look forward to uh, seeing what the Falcons do this upcoming softball season. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Steve.